Restaurants come and go as food fixations change. One study found that more than half of all restaurants close or get new owners within the first year of operation. So when Rob Wiles heard about a restaurant in Nashville going strong after more than 50 years, well, he knew he had to bend the knee to the Dairy King. The original Dairy King was probably built in the late 1940s and a bit later was owned by Bill Harbison. In 1970, the Joneses, Thelma and Dudley, bought the place and everything was groovy until 1979. Then a major flood hit. But Thelma and Dudley picked up, cleaned up, dried out, and reopened. Things were great again until 2010. Floods couldn't dampen the Dairy King spirit. Like the Jones family just packed up, moved to a new location here down the street from the old one, and they brought with them all the important things, you know, like good food and friendly folks who could make you feel like you're part of the Jones family. Luckily, this building was available and it just kind of worked out for us. Uh, it was amazing the way it worked out, but we got in here, we built the thing and got open in around six and a half months. We opened in November of that year. That, that's, that's moving right along. We, we, we were blessed. Yeah. Here we go. As Thelma and Dudley's son, Jeff Jones was there as the Dairy King's reputation was built. I got to go to work when I was 13 years old. And, you know, uh, I think I think my mom paid me 50 cents an hour. And, you know, for a kid, that wasn't bad. You know, I worked summers. I just worked all the time and all through school. As things will go, Jeff's parents got older, even though his mom continued to work here until right before she died. She would fry flat cornbread, and that's what she would do and uh, everyone was perfect. Everyone was perfectly brown on both sides. She was the best, you know, and uh, she'd come out and talk and sit down. She'd fry some bread, come out, and she was just a rock star. My, my, my dad, too. Uh, his table was up on the corner, and we called it the liar's table. And we, we had the guys would come around and just sit and talk and tell stories. Well, how's a retired life? A role that has passed to Jeff, who seems to know many of the customers who come here. Hey, guys, come on in here. How are you? When Thelma and Dudley were gone, Jeff and his wife Caroline stepped in to keep the king going, even though it was tough following Thelma and Dudley. They were pillars of the community uh, when I was in school, you know, just very active, uh, just great folks, uh, did, did a lot of good work for a lot of people, helped a lot of people out. They just, they were amazing. I was fortunate to have them as parents, no doubt about it. Big shoes to fill. The, uh, the product and the reputation preceded me. Something else that preceded Jeff are employees who worked for his folks and now for him. Employees like Lawsonita Games, who's worked here for more than a quarter century because, well, your food is her passion. When I was coming up, coming from the country, and you know, back then, you know, you had to cook and learn how to do things, you know, and it just was a passion. My whole family, you know, they like cooking, you know, and I just, I guess my mom, you know, and my dad and all of them, you know, they just enjoyed it. And it's, it's like a passion, you know, you got the feel for it. You just can't throw something in the pot and say, that's cooking, you know, you got to have that feeling, you know what I'm saying? I do know, and you will too, when you taste what comes from Los Anita's passion and Thelma Jones' recipes. Now the menu here has changed quite a lot since the early days, when the Dairy King was really a hamburger stand, serving things like... Chili dogs, uh, you know, hamburgers and, and soft serve milkshakes and Sundays and all, that's what they were. And that carried on, you know, through about the mid 70s. And then <clears throat> when everything hit here on Murfreesboro Road, and, and then it, my mom and dad took a pretty good hit. Uh, Americans no longer had to get out of the car to get a hamburger. 
So um, she retooled and started doing what she loves to do, which is cook Southern food, and uh, started out small with a bowl of white beans and cornbread, and just kind of grew into a full-blown meat and three. We do like uh, 10 veggies and, and three or four entrees five days a week. What vegetables would you like? Uh, if you got a sweet tooth, there's one thing on the menu that will get your attention and keep it for a while. Basically, it's a turnover, like a peach turnover or an apple turnover, and then we dip it in a batter and deep fry it. Uh, so the batter's flour and sugar, and it just really makes it crunchy and sweet, and the pudding is incredible, so it's just, people go crazy about those chocolate fried pies. I usually tell people, I, they have to sign a disclaimer, we're not responsible for 12-step programs, chocolate, and anything. If you, you're eating this on your own accord, but uh, yeah, my dad was, he was kind of like a crack dealer. I'll give you the first one free, you know. <laughs> and uh, th then they'd be back, but anyway, he was a character. Well, there you are. Dudley and Thelma's legacy lives on here at The King. One reason why Jeff and Caroline are happy to keep the place going. Carrying on the tradition and honoring my parents, I think was big and we just got so many repeat customers, like we just, we shut down week after Christmas, you know, and I got people, what do you need for a week? Uh, <laughs> you know, so uh, we've got so many loyal customers, uh, both in the area locally, and also we've got folks that come in that work here in Nashville that don't live here, and they either come for lunch or they'll swing by and get something to take it home. Once we're here though, Peggy. Eat it here, take it home, either way you're likely to come back to pay your respects to the king as it moves into its next half century.